Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video I have two topics. The first one, the main one, which will be 95% of this video, is words to word from the Prime Minister of Slovakia, Robert Fico. Thank God he made it through this attack on his life. He survived. I know many of you have been praying for him being alive, staying safe and also recovering. And I am certain that there is enormous power in prayer and the energy that people put out wishing someone well. I believe in this. I know that it works. Many people can testify and have testimonies of uh, miracles just by the prayer alone. But this also is important to read you because a lot of uh, media report on his about 14 minute long video that he posted yesterday on Facebook. I still call it Facebook. I know it's Meta or Meta now. Um, but I decided not to, not to just give you a few words. I decided to give you every word he said because he said a lot of important things and also what this shows. It shows something that maybe many of you thought about, like I did. Very often, if not all the time, if not always, when those politicians, those leaders are not convenient, very inconvenient, and they don't align with the plan of the reptiles, as I say, those powers try to first, well, sometimes they switch, first remove <laughs> and that's done, or warn first and then remove, right? Completely from the earthy existence. But if they don't remove them, they warn them. You remember, I think it was 2022, I think it was 2022, when Scholz, the Chancellor of Germany, was not quite sure and didn't really, was not too eager, let's say this way, to send some military equipment, I don't remember what equipment, tanks or something, to Ukraine. And then one day he was just jogging and when he was jogging, I, I don't you know, he said he fell down or tree or something, or maybe he met someone who just punched him in the face and something happened to his eye or something of that nature. And what happened after that punch? Let me find the way I think is here. Well, then after that jogging, he took some time and he changed his mind. So I was thinking about this when Prime Minister of Slovakia, Robert Fico, was going through all those procedures, saving his life, I was thinking, not only will he return to work in full mental capacity, being able to make those important, very difficult decisions, but I was actually thinking, what decisions he will make now? Maybe he will change his mind? Maybe he will be like Schultz, which I, you know, honestly, I didn't think he will be like Schultz. But you never know. You never know one, how one reacts to trauma and how, how scary this was, right? For him, as an individual, as a human being. So that's why I decided to read you um, the words that he has spoken during this video. He actually looked really good, in my opinion. I know he's, uh, he lost a lot of weight, but he looked pretty well and pretty sharp mentally. But before I do this, guys, before I read you his words, I want to start with a comment who is left by someone who I actually met in person uh, over a year ago when I was in Greece for the first time. I was in Athens. Let me think this way, maybe better. You have a view. I was in Athens and I have met with Eleni. Eleni Tsigante. Eleni, if I mispronounce your name, Apologies, Greek name, you know, Polish, uh, how it goes. I will learn one day. <laughs> um, you left very important comment about the corridors 
that have been presented on the map, the map that I posted yesterday as my thumbnail for the video, and that was NATO's plan to use Europe and use Europe in a, against Russia, against full-scale war with Russia. Your comment is very important because it highlights the scenario which I tend to believe if we don't go nuclear and everything is just completely gone, I don't think we will go nuclear actually, but this will be the scenario for Europe. So the comment is, the West has lost, thank goodness, in Ukraine. The West has lost in Ukraine, thank goodness. The land corridors are about consolidating the West's military occupation of Europe by force so that all of Europe becomes the front line against Russia, against the people's will. Clue. Wherever the corridors pass, national laws and national sovereignty is totally suspended. Eleni, I agree with this 100%. 100%. There were actually some comments, some talks about that, about NATO's forces dominating and controlling the streets in many European Union countries. And this makes sense to me now. Well, I don't agree with this, but this vision that you presented in your comment makes sense. Because I think this is the most likely scenario that's gonna take place. You know, they poof the Nord Stream pipeline. Europe becomes, Europe depends on the energy, not from Russia, but from, you know, where. And then you bring the military here that of course will be living on the expenses of the citizens of those countries and you control those countries. So we kind of have like a World War II, after World War II moment to some extent. I agree with your comment. Thank you for that. Let's go to Robert Fito. And the words from him, I have my notes all over the place today, guys, because uh, I was trying to use my notebook to the fullest. So I will be flipping pages a lot. Let's go through the, com through the words. Bratislava, June 5th, that was yesterday when he posted the video. Uh, he said those words on May 15th an activist of the Slovak opposition tried to assassinate me in Handlova because of my political views. The great medical team at Roosevelt Hospital in Banska Bystrica pre prevented the worst. Now the hospital of St. Michael in Bratislava is providing me with equally excellent medical care on the out patient basis. So he seems like he's soon going to leave this hospital. If everything goes as planned, I could gradually return to work at the, at the end, the turn of June and July. It's time for me to make the first move and that is forgiveness. I feel no hatred towards the stranger who shot me. I will not take any legal actions against him, nor will I seek damages compensation. I forgive him and let him sort out what he did and why he did it in his own head. In the end, it is evident that he was only a messenger of evil and political hatred, which the political unsuccessful and frustrated opposition developed in Slovakia to unmanageable proportions. It is to be expected that the anti-government media foreign-founded political, non-governmental organizations and the opposition will begin to downplay my assassination attempt. That it was only an attack by a deranged person, that there were no connections between him and the opposition, that the harm to my health was not serious. I have always protected my privacy, so even now, I will limit myself to just stating that the attack caused serious damage to my health. Repeated surgeries, a lot of pain and suffering. 
It will be a minor miracle if I return to work in a few weeks. I want to ask the anti-government media, especially those co-owned by the financial structure of George Soros, not to go down this path and to repeat to, and to respect sorry and to respect not only the gravity of reasons for the attempted attempted murder but also the consequences of his attempt and again i challenge them to conduct the already known test by robert fito how would they behave if something similar happened to one of the leaders of the Slovak opposition and the attacker was a person with connection to Smer, Slovak Social Democracy. Smer, this is the name of this party. I have no reasons to believe this was an attack by a lone madman. For several months now, I have been publicly communicating that the, po that the probability of an assassination of a government politician in Slovakia is approaching certainty. Actually, before I continue, I remember this moment. You remember when he was saying uh, after one of those meetings, it was, I think, February, when he was announcing that they want to send NATO troops to Ukraine. And he said, I will say it now, even knowing that this might cost me my position. He was mentioning this. I'm sure those of you who are from Slovakia and watching me, I know there are some of you and you leave very nice comments under my videos. You will agree with this and you also very welcome to put your uh, comments here since you live in the country. I spoke about it publicly in the media and at the press conferences. I said it to all EU and NATO ambassadors in Slovakia. I also opened the topic at several bilateral meetings with my partners a few weeks ago at the cabinet meeting, I even asked the ministers to avoid situations involving crowds. No, I had no intelligence reports, but my experience after, thir after 32 years in politics warned me. During my long political career, I have always relied on the basic political rights to a different opinion, and I fundamentally disagree with the style correct opinion policy that some major Western democracies are aggressively promoting today. I reject interference in the internal affairs of other countries or the forced export of democracy to countries that have decided to go their own way. Slovakia does not have the economic and military resources to enforce its interest by force. We must therefore constantly strive for strict, I don't know this word, adherence, I think it's called, you pronounce it. Just give me a second guys, because the car and the people, adherence. To international law and have the courage to call things for what they are no matter how large a country they relate to. If a small country like Slovakia has political leaders with such a fortitude, its position on international stage is not always easy. Not all major democracies were happy when I refused the bombing of Belgrade or withdrew Slovak soldiers from Iraq, blocked the introduction of mandatory quotas for illegal migrants or radically rejected the proposal to abolish the right of uh, veto for EU member states. A self-confident sovereign Slovak foreign policy, although based on membership in the EU and NATO, but oriented towards all four corners of the world, is simply not in vogue. Just waiting for this car. One sec. Okay. The situation and the relations between my political representation and partners in the EU and NATO escalated after the Russian attack on Ukraine, where we refused to provide Ukraine when, with any military aid from state stocks, except for humanitarian aid, and where we continue to fundamentally prefer peace to war. It is 
precisely the conflict in Ukraine that in the EU and NATO has elevated even more, literally sanctified the concept of the single correct opinion, namely that the war in Ukraine must continue at any cost in order to weaken the Russian Federation. Anyone who does not identify with this single mandatory opinion is immediately labeled as a Russian agent and politically marginalized internationally. It is a cruel observation, but the right to a different opinion has ceased to exist in the European Union. After winning the parliamentary elections in September 2023, when Smer SSD, this is the Slovakian party, managed to form the fourth government absur absurdities, I mispronounced it, I'm sure, began to occur. So the absurd begin to occur. The party of European socialists, of which Smer SSD is a long-time member, instead of congratulating them on the election victory, suspended Smer SSD membership Demonstra demonstrably because of different views on the war in Ukraine and our reservations towards the support of extreme views on ethical issues. During the V4 meeting in Prague, there was an attempt, fortunately unsuccessful, to break up this important structure of regional cooperation with the justification that Slovakia and Hungary have dif differing views on some international topics. The reluctance of some large democracies to respect the concept of a sovereign and self-confident Slovak foreign policy became grist to the mill of the Slovak opposition, which cared to power which came to power in 2020 after grossly political, politically abusing the still unsolved murder of a journalist and his girlfriend against my third government in 2016 to 2020. The government, which was formed by the opposition in 2020 to 2023, fully submitted to the interests of large countries and above all, after the start of the war in Ukraine, it immediately adopted the concept of the single correct opinion and literally looted the Slovak armed forces stockpiles. One second. So looted those stockpiles significantly, reducing Slovakia's defense capabilities and joined the camp of the countries promoting a military solution to the conflict in Ukraine. In return, the Slovak government could do as it pleased. Between 2020 and 2023, there was a widespread abuse of the penal code to liquidate the opposition. Opposition representatives were accused and detained without evidence. There were instances of suspicious deaths in custody. As an opposition leader, I was accused four times without any reason being given for my political activities. For three years, we have been drawing the EU's attention to the situation in Slovakia, yet not a single word of criticism was uttered, sorry guys, let me move, was uttered regarding the quality of the rule of law in Slovakia and the antics of the government in abusing the penal code to eliminate the opposition. No one, neither in the EU, nor from the, re from the representatives of the individual large Western democracies, nor Brussels, nor NATO. Physical threats against high-ranking government politicians as was the case, for example, of member of the National Council of the Slovak Republic, Erik uh, Kaliniak, I think you say his name, and his wife, or Lubos Blaha, therefore became an acceptable standard for aggressive representatives of the opposition. The hatred and aggressiveness of the current opposition covered and tolerated by opinion forming media non-governmental organizations founded by foreign countries and unfortunately without any response 
from international organizations picked after the successful presidential election of coalition candidate Peter, or you say Peter there, I believe, Peter Pellegrini in the spring of this year. The Bratislava Cafe aggressively, often physically attacks government officials. Just bear with me because I have pages all over guys today. The fire on, oh, sorry, this is my mistake. Officials, the opposition right here. The opposition sends paid provocateurs to national holiday celebrations who grossly insult constitutional officials, actors after their political speeches at opposition's rallies, rallies attack government officials during theater performers or RTVS live broadcasts are being grossly misused. The opposition shows no respect for the outcome of the democratic parliamentary elections or for the authorities. And it should also be added that after the parliamentary elections in September 2023, the Smer SSD government did not proceed with any expected revenge for the antics of the opinions between opposition between 2020 and 2023 when it was in power. Dear friends, on May 15th in Handlova, it was not an act of, it was not an act by some madmen. Let me sit down again because the noise ended. Those are important words, guys, because many, those reports that you read, they just give you the statements from him that is, you know, I'll be back in June, July, but you have to listen to what this man is saying here. The opposition abuses how large democracies enforce a single mandatory opinion on major foreign policy issues and reject the sovereign position of small countries. In domestic Slovak politics, this manifests itself in such a way that any violent and hateful excess against legitimate government power are tolerated at the international level without any comment. The opposition was unable to assess because no one forced them to do so. Where their aggressive and hateful politics had led section of the society and it was only a matter of time before a tragedy would occur. Today, I already concluded that after what happened to me on May 15th, as I did not approach a crowd in Handlova, but only a small group of people waving friendly, I should be full of anger, hatred and revenge. Opposition to a, politi opposition to a uh, politicians you disagree with is not resolved by shooting him. On the contrary, I would like to express my belief that all the pain I have gone through and I am still going through will serve something good. People could see with their own eyes what horror can happen if someone is not able to demo democratically compete and respect other opinion. I'm not political angel either. I can be tough. Even the governments I lead, I led, were not and are not perfect. Certainly, many things could have been done differently and precisely the offer to do things differently and better to have different opinions opinions must be the elementary basic of any meaningful demo democratic competition the offer cannot be imprisoned or maliciously kill the opponent for no reason whatsoever the opposition will have to think about this if it continues as it is now the horror of May 15, which you all had the opportunity to see practically live, will continue and there will be more victims. I don't doubt it, not for a second. Dear friends, in conclusion, I would like to reiterate my thanks to the doctors and medical staff in Banska Bystrica. They were great. Last page. I cannot forget the murder, the, sorry, I cannot forget the medics in Handlova and the air ambulance service. Thanks also to you for all the expressions of support. I am only now learning 
about the extent of this support and it has been and still is incredible. I really appreciate it. I believe that society will calm down and that we will meet soon in a meaningful and peaceful manner. All the best and let's keep our fingers crossed. This is what Robert Fico said yesterday, everyone. Let me just pick this up. And I decided to read all those words. You know why? Because he didn't change his approach to what's taking place. And this is, in my opinion, the most important thing. He's still a fighter and I am... Actually, he showed something that when you look at those true leaders, they all have in common. That's how I look at it. At least it's spiritual maturity. Someone who can find in himself, in spite of the pain that he is going through, he's ready for forgiveness. He's ready to forgive. He doesn't want revenge and he fights a good fight. And the fact that he is staying in the St. Saint Michael Hospital, when, I, when he mentioned this name, I was actually blown away because Archangel Michael, it's a very, very, very powerful, I would say, being. It's a protector, it's a fighter. It's, a, it's an archangel that fights evil. And it's actually my favorite archangel. There are no coincidences that Robert Fico is doing what he's doing and I continue to wish him health, strength, long-lived life and transforming things that at first seemed impossible. That's all I have for you guys for today's video. Uh, the full video you will find in the box down below, description box. Make sure to hit this like before you go. Subscribe if you haven't already. To those of you who are subscribed, but you're not receiving the notification, please uh, go on the main page of my channel once in a while and just check if the new video is posted out because YouTube, as you know, is not recommending lately. Those of you who like to share, I appreciate it immensely. I would like to remind you that my project with Scott Ritter will be announced on my local page. This project might put my channel in risk. That's why I would like to ask you to join my mailing list free of charge. Join me on Locals and uh, follow me on Instagram as well. If you would like to support my work by donations, huge thank you from the bottom of my heart. You can buy me a coffee, become a supporter on Locals, member of this channel, you have this option join. When you go on the, under the video, you have the option join. You can become the member. It's about two, three dollars per month. Or you can donate on PayPal or go to my fundraiser. That's all for today, everyone. Let's keep on praying for Prime Minister of Slovakia, Robert Fico. Lots of love. And remember, we are the leading edge and we are saving humanity. Bye everyone.